All right, everyone. So we're going to break down the trades from today. It's a red day recap, a uh, second red day in a row. In fact, I'm having flashbacks because it was two weeks ago that I was red on Monday and then red again on Tuesday. So here we are, Monday and Tuesday this month. What is the deal? I don't know. But so the issue today, it was Donald J. Trump media. DJT did me dirty today. I'm not the first one who's ever said that. I got smoked. Uh, I got so frustrated. And you know what? I had a really solid trade on it. And then I gave it all back and went red. So here's the problem. Well, this is an expensive stock. And I was oversizing for the range. It had a much bigger range than I was expecting. And I had too many shares. You know, I couldn't afford to, to hold through that range. So DJT, we'll pull it up. This was um, my biggest my biggest regret today. But you know what? I'll, I'll As I look at this chart, um, and I'm just going to switch to, let's see, I'm going to load my one minute. One thing that I'll say is that um, it got it got worse uh, as the day went on. DJT, we could look at this uh, one minute chart here, and you will see. Look at this candle right there. So we're gonna switch this to auto. So look at this one minute candle. All right. So it starts to kind of squeeze back up. It looks like it's kind of ramping higher, right? It's like, oh my gosh, is this thing gonna go back through the pre market high or the high a day of seventy eight dollars, nearly eighty dollars? Squeeze up to seventy six, and then boom. It just dropped $10 a share. Holy smokes. Someone pressed the sell button. Was it DJT himself? I don't know. Someone pressed the sell button. Someone sold a good chunk of shares right there. But the area we're going to get focused in on is right in here and right in here. All right. So why don't we go back to the beginning? First of all, I have to say that... <laughs> I'm tr I'm not, I feel like, you know, I, just to give some context, um, you know, yesterday was a red day for me. I was trading from the airport hotel. The flight that I had back on Sunday was super delayed. I didn't get back till super, super late. So I ended up sleeping in the hotel and at the airport, did not get a lot of sleep, woke up, traded, instantly was red three grand yesterday. This is so classic. It's so classic. It makes me angry to say it because it's like, yeah, well, duh, you didn't sleep well. You're not in your environment. You know, like, of course you had a bad day trading. Are you surprised? No. The problem is in the moment when I sit down and set up, well, first of all, I'm like, pretend like I'm the mailman that I'm going to show up rain or shine. I don't like to take any days off. In the last 10 years of trading, I've missed two full weeks. One was when I had a concussion and the other was when, um, it was just when I took a vacation. I was like, I'm going to take a week off. And, and I even feel silly saying that I took a vacation because it feels so selfish. But in any case, I show up every single day for the most part. And so I showed up yesterday, but then I walked myself into, you know, just having a shorter fuse and getting stubborn on my first trade and losing um, 3000 on my first trade of the day on Monday morning. So anyways, as you know, I did my recap yesterday. I don't have to go over all of it again today. But um, yesterday was a bad day. And I was frustrated about it all day long. And what I was saying to myself yesterday is I was like, you know, the issue here is you're too zoomed in. Because as I was driving home, I was like, I was just so annoyed. And I, I just was like, you're, you're an idiot. You know, God, you're so stupid. Why did you, you know, you're trying to rebuild your account right now slowly after having this drawdown two weeks ago. And you've got to just be focused. And this is so sloppy. I was frustrated with myself. I was frustrated with the market. You know, the problem is when you take a trade like that and you lose, it's like losing at a game. You know, you can only lose so many times at Monopoly before you flip the table. <laughs> you're just like, I rate. And that's kind of how it is with trading sometimes. You're just like, how many times in a row can I lose before I'm just going to like blow my top? So, uh, so that was yesterday. And I was like, well, you know what? I feel like I'm getting really fixated on the fact that I'm red today. Like, what does it really matter? You know, red days happen. We're traders. They're going to happen all the time. Like, get over it. Let it go. Why are you getting so fixated on it? And it's because I think in that moment, I'm just super, super zoomed in on, you know, the last, well, you know, the last trading session. So if we look at kind of an equity curve here, 
you know, we, we're up and then we have a little drawdown and then we're up and then we have a little drawdown and then we're up and then we have a drawdown. And so, you know, this, let's just say that's my $30,000 drawdown right there. Um, the problem is I'm zoomed in and I'm just looking at this and I'm like, you're a loser. Look over the last, you know, you just gave back all everything you made in the last like three days or something like that. You know what I mean? And I get really bent out of shape and that's like, well, hold up, hold up. What's also true? This is also true, right? Over the last, you know, four weeks, over the last five, six weeks. What's also true over the last, you know, 90 days, right? Over the last 365 days. And then it's like, okay, you know what? You're right. Why am I getting so bent out of shape right here? So, okay, right now the market's slow. We had a really nice hot streak. It was awesome. I wish it could have continued, but the market cooled off a little bit. So now I'm in a little bit of a slump and I've got a couple red days in a row. Now, you know, big picture, life is still good. So stay focused. The worst thing you can do is get sloppy because then you're just going to start going down here. And that's because of emotion. It's emotion that's driving your PL if you let that happen. And, and, you know, it's happened to me before. So anyway, so, so DJT, um, well, first of all, so I started the day today. My first trade of the day was on Pixie piece of garbage so pixie hits my scanner it's got a ridiculously low float 600,000 shares and i bought 600 shares of it just a small position i got in pixie um as it was squeezing up my initial entry on this was let's see i'm gonna roll it back it was uh three dollars and 55 cents so i got in like right here it ends up pushing higher to 388 and then it drops all the way down here anyways I lost $48 on it. Doesn't matter. It's not the end of the world, obviously, but $48 loss. First trade of the day. I'm in the red. Second trade of the day, BCAN. BCAN hits my scanner. And I was like, all right, well, this thing just hit a low yesterday. It was all it looks like it was all time lows. It's a recent reverse split starting to bounce up. I'll take a starter of this, right? So I took a starter of it at $2. That was right here as it was starting to curl up right into this volume, all that volume spiking. So I jumped in right there at 207. I was in at 207. It hits a high of 217. There's a 20,000 share seller on the ask. It starts to thin out. It goes 20, 17, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Boom. I add another 2,000 shares up there. So now I'm in with 10,000 shares, almost something like that. A little bit of a bigger position relative to the fact that I should be trading more conservatively, but it's a cheap stock ends up dropping down. I stop out of that for a $288 loss. So I'm like, man, two losers in a row. Okay, this is not great. Next stock, ABVC. ABVC pops up on my scans. And honestly, same thing. Um, I jumped in this. Uh, I didn't jump in it at first. I was like, ah, I don't trust it. We just had a couple rejections. You know, I, I don't trust this. This thing's probably not going to work. Um, but it pulls back and it holds up. So I was like, you know what? All right, this one's holding up. I'm going to get in. I got in for the break of two. What does it do? It drops back down. <laughs> so I lost 700 on that. Okay, so I'm three trades into the day. I've got three losses. And I'm not really, you know, so first loss, I'll do it in red. So first loss is, you know, $48. Okay, doesn't matter. And then the second one was 288. And then the third one was 700. So now I'm down like $1,000. It's still a very small red day. So I'm just like, well, whatever, like, this isn't that big of a deal. But I'm, I'm uh, but at the same time, I'm a little annoyed. I'm like, man, this market really is slow right now. This kind of sucks. There's nothing strong. Like, I wish there was something really strong. And then DJT. All right, so DJT, DWAC did the merger, simple change. So now it's DJT, which is, I, I hate a ticker like this because it's hard to pronounce. DJT, DJT, <laughs> I, I like tickers like Pixie and Sizu, stuff that's easy to say. Anyways, whatever. Of course, they named it DJT. So, um, so, so this is like nine o'clock. And honestly, I'm like, you know, I'm just kind of like, I don't know. I don't have much of an opinion about it. I saw it earlier, but I saw that the pre-market high was about $65, $66, $65. So it came up to that level once, twice, kind of three times. And as it came back up here, I was like, you know what? Let's see. 
and it punches through right here and goes to 68. And so I took my first trade on this a little high. I bought at um, 67.95 and I added it at 68. And this thing goes to 68.50. It goes to 60, 69. It goes up to 70. It goes up to a high of 71.80. Now in this candle, look, it hits a high of 71.80 and drops to 68. I got, I got scared. I sold. All right. So I sold. I made like 700 bucks on the first trade. Then it comes back up and I got back in for the break of 72. And at the open, this thing jams up to $78.80. I was like, holy smokes. I took it off the table. I was up three grand on DJT. So I was up 2000 on the day. And then I added back a uh, 1,000 shares on the dip at 76. It flushes to 72. <laughs> so I lost four points. So now I'm like, whoa. And then it flushes down even further. I add at 70. I added uh, 2,000 shares at 70. And all of a sudden, it drops all the way down into a halt. I went from up $2,000 on the day to down $8,000. I went red $8,000 on the day. And I was just like, this is ridiculous. This is so disappointing. This is so frustrating. Um, this is so, so stupid. You know, I just, I didn't expect I was going to lose four points in one second like that. And I did. So as it starts to curl back up, I was like, all right, breathe. It's still early. It's only 9.35, 9.45. As it starts to push up here, I was like, you know what? I'll add back 500 shares. I'll just start five. Let's see. What did I add back? I think it was 500. Maybe it was 1,000. I added back. It squeezes up to 73. I added back. And it ends up coming back all the way up to 79, uh, just about almost $80 a share. So I came all the way to max loss. I was down $8,000 uh, on the day. I was past my max loss of five grand and I kept trading. So Justin and a couple, someone in the room was like, Ross, what, you know, what made you decide to trade past your max loss today? And I was like, well, you know, it honestly, it's really, it's a tough call because there are days where I trade past max loss and I just lose more. And I'm like, you're an idiot. That was so dumb. And there's other days where I trade past max loss. And I had a day a couple of weeks ago where I was down 15 grand and I finished the day at 5,000. Uh, and it's something that I sort of struggle with knowing like, should I just, especially when I hit max loss really early and I'm like, oh, there's a lot of potential left in the day. So the purpose of max loss is that it's designed to prevent emotional hijack and it's designed to just stop the bleeding at a certain point. So I don't have a day where I go down 50 or a hundred or $200,000. So I was down 8,000 and I said, well, DJT is still volatile. I think there's still opportunities on it. And I was also watching Reddit out of the corner of my eye, but I was like, uh, I don't know. So I got back in because the chart to me looked good and I wasn't wrong on that, but my p &L on the day wasn't in a place where I should have continued trading. It hit 78.79 and I could have easily added back and then gone down 15, 20,000 on the day, right? But I didn't. I took my profit off the table. And so I went from down uh, 7,000 on DJT, which was a $10,000 swing from being up three grand on it to down, to down only 1,300. So I recovered from below max loss to being down. Oh, I don't actually, maybe I didn't even show this yet to being down um, $1,158.15, which is a red day. Um, it's a red day. It's not as bad. I recouped a good chunk of the loss, um, but it's it's annoying nonetheless. I mean, obviously losing is just annoying, period. And I, I lost. Um, you know, I took a pretty good size loss on DJT. I was trading a stock that's a little outside my comfort zone, a little outside my go-to price range. And you know, I got smoked on it. And it's been frustrating because there hasn't been a lot that's been within my comfort zone. Uh, CZOO, Sizu uh, was the only one that I traded today and made money on, made 1200 on it. 
it's up 100% right now. It's continuing higher. Um, it's got 11 million shares of volume. So, you know, I got a trade on this. This was way earlier, though. It was way back here um, in this part of the move. It ended up halting down, opening way lower, kind of grinding and then pushing higher after hours. But, um, you know, the fact is there's not a lot of liquidity after hours on this. Could I trade it here and make $1,100 and go flat on the day? Eh, maybe, you know, but but I'll show you right now. It's got a 40 cent spread, 35 cent spread. So it's just it's got a lot of risk on it. It's just not really worth it. But it's disappointing when the market's slow because you just kind of get fed up of like losing. You're like, oh my God, I'm losing again. Like this is ridiculous. Um, and then, you know, next thing you know, it's a hot market and you're like, you get complacent. You're, you just start having winner after winner after winner. And it's like 5,000, 10,000, 15,000. You feel like you're on top of the world. And that's the biggest struggle with trading is the sort of emotional roller coaster that we ride. And and I, I ride it, you know, every single day, it seems like. And that's, but that's trading. There's no way not to. It's just the way trading is. So anyways, um, you know, not much else to say other than that. This is my um, my red day recap. So two red days here in a row. It's a bummer, but it's not the end of the world. I'll certainly be back at it first thing tomorrow morning. And, you know, hopefully tomorrow we see a scanner that's got a little bit more you know, juice. It's got some momentum. I think today we were dealing with a bit of distraction, dispersed attention, DJT. You've got uh, Reddit. I mean, it's like attention was just spread all over the place. And I don't usually do well when it's like that. We didn't have a really obvious stock today. And we didn't really have one yesterday either. So I've got to be more patient. I've got to try to wait. I'm still in a drawdown. You know, as many of you know, I, I had the, like the thirty thousand dollar, well, one hundred fifty, sixty thousand dollars of profit, and then lost thirty thousand here, and then I rallied back um, about a little more than half of that, um, you know. But then between yesterday and today, I've dipped back down a little bit. So I'm obviously, you know, do not want to break this low and then be in a position of stair stepping down. So okay, I had a couple of days of drawdown. Now I've got to, you know move back higher. And that just might be the way this is. It's sort of a slow ascension back up. I was hoping I'd be curling and rallying like this. Uh, but if that's not what the market wants to give me, then I'm not going to get it. And the harder I try, the further it's going to be out of reach because I'm going to make stupid mistakes. So this is out of the question at this point. Now I've got another drawdown. So I've got to kind of tighten up my risk again a little bit. You know, the thing with DJT is I didn't even take big size. Well, 3,000 shares. I mean, it's it's pretty big. It's 200 grand in the stock. But in terms of share size, you know, which is how I usually think about it, it wasn't big size. But, you know, that's that is right there is the reason in favor of pulling some profit out of the account periodically. So when you're used to trading five and 10,000, 15, 30,000 shares, whatever, of a six to $10 stock, you don't even have the buying power to do it on a $70, $80 stock. But Having the buying power to do it is what allowed me to make so much money during GameStop. So I had the money and I was able to put it to work. So, you know, I don't want to not have the buying power when I need it. But right now, this isn't the market that I should be putting that kind of uh, money on the line in. So I feel a little bit frustrated that this month has not been as profitable as I wanted it to be. I had $100,000 of profit more than uh, 116, I think it was in February. And then I was up 30,000 at the beginning of March. And then Lost 30 grand in two days and went right on the month. Rallied back, you know, made like, I don't know, 15,000 or so back. And then another couple couple red days. And remember, with the broker that I trade with, I have fees and commissions. And yesterday I had, uh, no doubt, a lot of fees and commissions. That made my red day yesterday even bigger. Because I, I probably had over $1,000 of fees and commissions yesterday. Because I was trading a cheap stock and I was trading, you know, getting in and out and in and out. So that's when things get really, get really frustrating. So, you know, I don't have to tell you, this is part of trading, but I put it all on the line here, you know, with you guys on, on my recaps, just to show you the real deal of what it's like. It's not all fun. There's challenges. It's a hard job. Emotions uh, are the hardest part. And someday, you know, if I put enough money away into my long-term, you know, dividend investing and long-term accounts, then I could take some pressure off myself to be grinding it out every day. But in the meantime, I show up every single day, rain or shine. I try to find something to trade, but this has been a market that's been very rainy. Not a lot of sunshine recently.
Hopefully it turns around soon. Thanks as always for tuning in. Reminders always, trading's risky. My results aren't typical, so take it slow. I'll see you back here tomorrow.